Okay? And that's the main important thing, is follow the process. The first thing I'd like you guys to do when solving a quadratic equation by completing the square is, again, isolate my variable terms. So I'm just going to get the variables on one side. So I'll subtract an 86. x squared minus 18x equals negative 86. Is everybody following? Got it. I isolated these. Now all my variables are on one side. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to um, factor out a numeric GCF. Does x squared and negative 18x have any numbers that are in common? They have an x, right? But that's a variable, GCF. I'm looking for a number. They don't have anything in common. So I'm not gonna I can't factor anything out. So I move to next step number three. Find the value c that completes the square. So remember, a x squared plus b x plus c equals 0. Okay. Remember that's part of the quadratic. a is the coefficient of your x squared, b is your coefficient of your x, and c is your constant. Okay. So once you have it in this form, this is still my b, because I could just add the 86 b in that format. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take b, divide it by 2, and square it. So I'll take negative 18 divided by 2 and squared. Negative 9 divided by 2 is going to be negative 9 divided by negative 18 divided by 2 is negative 9. Squared is going to be positive 81. OK. And then, oops, let's make that, let's make this in green. Then I add that to both sides. Now, why do you add that to both sides? That's because the property of equality. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you please remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side, right? So if you're adding 81 to the left side, you have to have 81 to the right side. Now, what is so important about completing the square? When you do b divided by 2 and square it, what that does is that gives you a value that creates a perfect square trinomial. Do you guys remember at the end of last class period, or any of the last class period's focus lesson, we factored perfect square trinomials. First term was squared, last number was squared. You guys remember? Kind of? Perfect square trinomials? This is a perfect square trinomial. The first term is a square term, the last term is a square term. Meaning you can take the square root of both of these. All perfect square trinomials factor to give you two binomials that are exactly the same x minus 9 times x minus 9. The reason why it's negative is because my middle terms are negative. If my middle term was positive, it would be x plus 9, x plus 9. All right? You always create a perfect square trinomial that can be factored into two binomials that are the same. This happens every single time. Okay, Bi Perfect square tri bi trinomials, that's what we covered. So rather than writing x minus 9 times x minus 9, we will write x minus 9 squared equals negative 86 plus 81 is going to be a negative 5. Then the last thing is I factored this to my binomial squared. This is a binomial squared. Then I solve using inverse operations. So I have my x that's being <coughs> subtracted by 9, and it's being squared. Before I can undo subtracting 9, i got to undo the squaring. So I take the square root. Yes? How do you get negative negative 86 plus positive 81. So I take the square root. Remember when you take the square root, so you have to include the positive and the negative. Okay. Therefore, this becomes x minus 9 equals plus or minus the square root of 5 times uh, negative 1. I broke apart negative 5 into 5 times negative 1 because in algebra 2, do you guys remember what the square root of negative 1 is? It's like i. It's i, yeah. And then I can just add the 9 to both sides. So my final answer is x equals 9 plus or minus the square root of 5i. And those would be my two solutions. Anybody have any questions on that?